Hey everyone, DCB here again. Today I'm going to show you how I like to make uh, two-part silicone molds for resin casting. With the cost of silicone being you know, over $100 a gallon, I like to be a little frugal with my silicone use and not just you know, do the basic pour block method that uh, most people use. So for my project today, I doodled this cartoon version of my girlfriend and I a while ago. And then I had a very talented professional toy sculpting friend of mine uh, make this 3D version of it. And his, his work is amazing and above and beyond what I could do or what I was even hoping for. So I wanted an actual hard copy of that. So I printed out this prototype on my resin printer, but I don't trust 3D prints to last the test of time. I recently heard about a lot of people's PLA prints that they made a couple years ago are now just deteriorating in their hands. And it's sad to think about all the hard work they do just now becoming a pile of crumbs. So I've also had that happen with resin prints like this. Over a few months or so, they just start to split apart. And I don't want that to happen to my works. So I like to use these as just a temporary item that I can then make a silicone mold off and then cast in a more durable lasting resin. Um, so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to show you the technique I used uh, using this head here. So let's go see how I do that. The first thing I do is go into Fusion and design a mother mold. This is the hard outer shell that will go around the piece and hold the silicone into shape. I then add a flange around both halves, and I want to make sure that when put together that they are the thickness of binder clips that I'll use to hold them together. Once I'm satisfied with my design, I print everything out. Now comes the tedious but satisfying task of building up a clay barrier in one half of the mold. For this step, you must use sulfurless clay because if you don't, you ruin the risk of your silicone not properly curing and you will cry. I like to take my time with this step, making sure to get a nice clean edge around the part. The more you can get a perfect 90 degree angle, the better your parting line will be. So I'll go around places like the ears and along the side where you can hide the lines as best as possible. Since this will be a mold for my rotocasting machine, I don't worry about pore spouts or air vents, but this method can certainly work for those kind of molds. You just need to think through your design of your mother mold a little more. After I have everything all flat and the edges all nice and sharp, I take this clay shape extruder and I crank out a triangular shaped clay snake. Um, I put this around the part and this will act as registration key for the two silicone halves. You'll see what I mean later. Now that that's all done, I put the upper shell in place and start pouring in the silicone. I'm using Smooth On Mold Max 30. It's a good general purpose tin cure silicone with a medium hardness that it runs about $115 a gallon. I've been using this silicone for years now with no issues at all. And I've had molds where I was able to pull over 100 parts out of it before it started to break down. It's always best practice to degas your silicone in a vacuum pot to remove as many air bubbles as possible. You can pick up one of these pots and pumps on Amazon for a little over a hundred bucks. Um, I didn't always do this in my early molding days, but now that I do, I notice a dramatic improvement in my molds. They turn out not only bubbleless, but they just have a more durable feel to them. You can also remove a lot of the bubbles just by pouring it in a thin stream and allowing areas for the air to escape. After about 24 hours, the first half of the mold is all set up and I can take off the backside and remove the clay that I just spent hours working on. Make sure you get every little bit of clay out of there. I find this step is actually easiest in the winter when it's a little cold in my shop. Uh, the clay just seems to come out a lot cleaner. Notice the areas where I put the snakes are now little valleys that will guide in registering the next piece. Now that all the clay is cleaned off, I need to create a barrier so that when I 
pour the second half in, it doesn't just stick right to the first side and lock it all together and totally defeat the whole reason for doing all this. For that, I'm using a mixture of Vaseline and mineral spirits. I mix them together to get the consistency of, I don't know, Vaseline and mineral spirits. It's, it's just liquidy enough that I can easily brush it all over the mold. And then I'll go back through with a Q-tip and clean any that I got on the part. Otherwise, this will affect the surface of the casting. Now I reattach the mother mold and pour the second half of the silicone. Basically the same as the first side. Here's a little bonus money saving tip. Save your old or defective molds and chop them into tiny chunks to be used as a filler when pouring a new mold. Another 24 hours later and let's see what we got. Oftentimes when I'm prying these apart for the first time, it seems a little stuck together and I start to question if I forgot the Vaseline or not. Fortunately, I haven't forgotten the step ever, but there's still a chance it could happen. Everything looks great. The piece will always be a little tricky to get out the first time as it's really locked in. Sometimes I'll just squirt some air down in the gaps and try to help it release its grip. This usually isn't as big an issue when you actually do the resin castings as resin will shrink up a little bit and help pull away from the silicone walls. Also, the mold release I'll be using will help release it from the mold as well. So now that everything looks good, I'm going to try it out on my rotocaster. It's always kind of a guessing game on how much resin to actually use, but a good rule of thumb that seems to work for me is to fill it about a third of what the entire piece would take if it was solid. On a part like this, that's basically an even sphere, that usually means filling up one half of the mold a little over halfway. And then um, I'll set up my machine for about 20 minutes and let her rip. Since the rotocast resin has less of a surface area than if I did it solid, I'd give it a little more time to cure than a normal pour mold casting. But after about 30 minutes, I think it's time to see what we have. A perfect casting the very first time. And yes, this is my first pull from this mold. It has very little flashing and the registration is just spot on. So there you go. Now on to six other molds. So here's the complete set of molds I ended up making for my sculpture. The heads and the bodies are like the mold I just showed you where it's a two part that goes together and I rotocast. The base and the floor of the base are basic one part mold where I just pour resin into the top. And then the glasses was a two part mold that I did. Uh, it was kind of tricky because they were so thin and small, but um, I ended up putting four holes in there. This is where I pour the resin and then air escapes out of these. And I was able to get a pretty good pull out of that. So here's the completed piece, all cast up, cleaned up, painted, clear coated, and assembled. I put magnets in their feet and then a corresponding magnet in the base so that they can stand up and balance. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks everyone for watching this video. I know there's a ton of molding videos out there, but maybe this technique is something new and you haven't seen before. Maybe you learned something or not, but you stay till this point anyway, so I thank you for that. So have a good day, and I'll see you some other time whenever I have something else to share. Thanks. Bye. Dorn, that's the end. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel, and follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Dustin Crops Boy. Also, check out our Tee Public page for t-shirts you can buy to help support this channel, or just go to the website dcbvarietyhour.com for all the links.